What's going on hikers? Welcome to today's video where we are talking about some super cheap ultralight gear for you. Today specifically, I have a sleeping bag for you to check out. Um, hopefully you love it as much as I do. The link for this bag and some other budget friendly ultralight-ish gear is linked below. So make sure you check that out um, if you want more products like this. Now this video was a, an idea by one of my subscribers named Champ and he was like, hey, can you do a review of one of your sleeping bags? And I was like, sure. So that's what we got going. If you have any other video ideas, um, why don't you all drop those in the comments below and I'll see if I can get to work for you and uh, check out those ideas. So I faced the problem when I first started backpacking. I was like, well, I'm tired of borrowing everybody else's gear. I'm gonna have to get some of my own, but I don't wanna drop some serious dough on this stuff because what if I don't actually care a whole lot for backpacking? So how I solved the problem is I got on Amazon and I, I read some reviews and I watched a bunch of YouTube videos and I discovered the Aegis Max Ultralight Down Sleeping Bag. And we'll get through the, the details and specifics first of the measurements. It comes in two sizes. Size number one is regular. This didn't fit my needs because it's 170 centimeters or about five foot seven um, for maxed out length. This is the one I purchased. This is the long version, which um, I would probably suggest going with because it's gonna give you a little bit more room in there. And it is 190 centimeters or six foot three. And that's about how tall I am, so I'm maxing it out. If you're any taller than that, I'm sorry, I would go with a different bag. Now this is a down sleeping bag, so that's gonna mean a few things. Uh, first of all, you're gonna have to wash it a certain way. I still have never washed mine and I've taken it on many trips. What's it smell like? It smells like campfire and stinky Jeremiah. Um, secondly, there's gonna be a fill power. Now, if you want me to do a whole video on fill power and how the warmth and all that works, I'd be more than happy to do that. You just let me know. But simply put, for right now, that's gonna determine how warm your bag is gonna be for you. My bag specifically here is 800 fill power. It doesn't matter if you get the regular version or the long version, it's still 800 fill power. With that fill power, you're gonna have a certain comfort rating. The comfort rating on this bag, whether you get the regular or the long version, is gonna be 53 degrees Fahrenheit. Or if you live anywhere else in the world besides the US, uh, that's 11 degrees Celsius for you. Now it does have a lower limit. That comfort rating is what you would be comfortable at sleeping at it, obviously. And this is a three season bag, but I took it last fall and I accidentally took it down to its lower limits. A lower limit is rated for 43 degrees. I got it to about 40 degrees on an uninsulated pad and I got a little bit cold in basketball shorts and a t-shirt. So at one point during the night, I threw on a fleece like this and I was still good to go. Now, if you are gonna take it to the lower limits, that 43, 40 degree range, um, I would suggest getting an, at least an insulated pad like a Neo Air X-Lite or something like that that's gonna raise the R value. The lowest, lowest extreme limit, which heavily, heavily caution you never to do this, it says it's 15 degrees or negative nine degrees Celsius. I don't know if I could survive at that temperature with this bag and it would be highly uncomfortable. You wanna stay around that 50 degree range. I did mention that this is an ultralight bag, ultralight, but you kinda of get what you pay for. So the weight for the long version, 528 grams or in pounds and ounces, one pound and right under three ounces. And then if you get the regular version, because um, you'll actually fit in there, because I won't, that weight is 408 grams. And if we're talking poundage, that's under a pound. So in my eyes, that's pretty good for the money that you're spending on this. Let's get into some opinion-based things, pros and cons. So pro number one, I like the price on this bad boy. This thing is under $100 and that may sound like a lot, but let me put things into perspective for you. For my winter bag, this is my summer and like, you know, warmer weather bag, right? So for my winter or cooler weather bag, drop 300 on it, it's a Nemo Disco 15 degree bag. So under $100, that's pretty good in my opinion. Pro number two, the weight. 
at just over a pound for the long version, this thing doesn't really add a whole lot of weight to my base weight. Pro number three, something else that I like about this bag is that the hood actually cinches up on it and you can pull it um, closed, just leaving a small opening for your face. That can help keep you warmer, um, especially if you're not sleeping with like a beanie on. Number four, this thing is compact. And when I say compact, I mean this thing shrinks up. I mean, look how small this is. And with more budget-friendly items, typically they're taking up more space in your backpack, and that's no good. So with this thing compacting so small, it's freeing up a lot of space for some of those other things that I have more budget-friendly inside the bag. Let's talk about those cons. Womp womp, con number one. This thing is a mummy bag, and that means it can be a little bit more restrictive for some people. And if you don't like mummy bags, which, which means it's a bag that you're zipping up around you and it's probably got a little bit of a taper to it, it can kind of feel like you're, you know, you're getting a hug, but a little bit tighter than you want. Now, I fit in this thing just fine, um, but I'm kind of a slimmer guy. So, you know, it may not be the right fit for you depending on your body frame and how free and unrestricted you like to sleep. Some people, an alternative for them would be a quilt so you can unzip it and you got a lot more space. Number two, this may sound like a silly one, but this thing only comes in green. How green? This green. Number three, I found this to be a big problem on many sleeping bags, but the zipper, um, the zipper on this thing can catch in the fabric, so you gotta be careful zipping it up. Last thing you wanna do is break a zipper on your sleeping bag and then you're out in the back country and that's just no good because you could actually get really cold. <laughs> do not be alarmed. Um, every sleeping bag that I've ever dealt with, even though they put those little like zipper guards on there, when you zip it up, sometimes it still catches. So just be careful. Number four, this, I was a little bit weirded out, but don't worry, it goes away. And it even comes with instructions. I don't know if it's the down feathers in this or what, but when this arrived to me, it arrived in its little cocoon stuff sack and it had an odd smell to it. And I opened it up and I was like, well, what is that? And uh, the directions say you gotta let it air out for like a week and then after that, the smell goes away. To finish up today's video, let's do three quick field tests with the sleeping bag. Um, first, I'll show you getting into the sleeping bag. Then we can look at how I fit inside Yep, the shimmy. Then thirdly, we'll finish up with a loft test, which would just be me standing on top of the sleeping bag. All right, let's see those field tests. So right now the sleeping bag is completely unzipped. And, oh, let's get inside the sleeping bag. I'm gonna have to work on my technique. The zipper is on the left. Uh, zipper up. Oh, we're in this thing. So if we're checking the fit on this thing, I'm laying on the Nemo Air X Lite, and this is kind of how much room you got. And then if I want to work with the hood, uh, there it is. And it's got a little cinch cord right here. And you can cinch it up around your head, keep yourself a little bit warmer. And then the feet uh, down in the toe box, you can see that, um, you know, I don't have a whole lot of room because it tapers down, but there is enough for me to be comfortable. Just for reference, I am six foot three, 200 ish pounds. So uh, I'm breaking a sweat for you all. We're gonna finish up with a loft test. The loft test is just me standing on the sleeping bag so you can see how puffy or how lofty the feathers are. Again, 800 filled down. Ignore the dog hair because we love our pups. 
Comment down below and let me know if there's any other videos that you want to see. It's a good budget friendly, light, three season, warmer weather uh, sleeping bag. So check it out. Like, subscribe, kick the notification bell for the latest notification. We'll see you in the next video.